Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live here in Victoria, British Columbia along with my pup Jordy on a wooden boat very much like the one we're on right now, but it's actually right behind there. Uh, for those of you who've been following along, we're going to finally finish up the propane locker which you guys are currently sitting on. Let's get on there. Okay, so if you were here last week, uh, you know that I kind of blundered by making the slot for all the hoses to go in far too long, too close to this end, so I couldn't put my fancy gland thing I made in here and it, the hoses it wouldn't work out at all. Lots of different solutions for that. One of the most exciting was to just put the gland on the inside, um, but that is a real service nightmare because getting in here to put these screws would be a drag. Yes, I could have screwed from this side, but it just gets out. Anyway, I think I have another, and of course, a lot of people su suggested putting it vertically, which seems obvious, except that the propane cylinder sits right inside and up at the top where the, the handle part of it is, there's room for hoses. But as soon as you get down a few inches, the, the full body of the cylinder gets too big and the hoses would have been quite crowded around there. Anyway, I think we can actually solve this problem much easier. I had started this by saying I need to leave a big gap at the... Uh, let me raise you up so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, this all began because I had to leave a gap at the forward end here against the bulk end that could, I could put a little ledger on to support the thwart. Basically the big mahogany thwart that's going to cover all this when this is done. Which is aside from the actual locker top. Um, but, I've changed my mind. What I can do, if I push the whole locker hard against the bulkhead and not leaving just enough to be able to put the cover on which that does it does a couple of things for me uh, one it leaves plenty of room you're probably gonna end up in the sun here for this to slide in here now no problem the first gland here is a wire which can easily make the turn and the second one is a small hose which can easily make the turn so that problem goes away entirely it does another thing for me let me just move you again I was going to have to rebuild the existing locker, you can see down on the sole, the shadow of the locker that used to be here. And here's part of the structure of it, which is obscenely thick. So I was going to have to rebuild this much, much thinner, basically just rip out a whole bunch of this to get it to fit. Now, I hardly need to do that. It basically fits as it is, which obviously makes this a lot easier too. So the downside is now I have no support between here and here for the thwart. I can continue with a ledger here, and I can also put a ledger in under here, which is why I left some of this decking remaining. So I can put a pretty stout ledger in there. Plus, this is not an insignificant structure itself. I'll put a little bit of um, weather strip gasketing on the bottom of the thwart, and it can sit right on top of this locker and not cause it any harm at all. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let's get on with it. Good thing I didn't drill the hole in the sole yet, eh? Because I moved the locker. But before I can do any of that, I have to change the routing of the propane lines that I've put in originally as a mock-up because although they work pretty well because they end up under the bed further forward and they're in a good location, um, this is not a serviceable location for putting in the locker. I could never get at these hoses again. So I'm gonna have to redrill holes in this bulkhead further up and then weave it down uh, in a much more serviceable arrangement. These two uh, hoses, pipes that come back for the, um, for the uh, outdoor shower uh, are actually in a much more suitable location being further over. So I, I might put them there too. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna work this. It never bloody ends. Um, okay, so I've just test fit the thwart, and yes, it fits beautiful down there, but perhaps to your skilled eye, you can see that it's sloping uphill rather drastically on the left side, on the port side. And I'm saying to myself, well, how is that possible? Everything is square. Well, I've just learned something interesting about this boat that I didn't know. This entire cockpit sole is cambered. <laughs> beautiful, just like a deck. It means when they built this, they built it cambered. The hatch is cambered. But my propane locker isn't cambered, but it's gonna be. <laughs> Pretty easy, I just grab the power planer and I put a little taper on my um, plastic sliders on the bottom and that will lower this side and everything will be fine. <laughs> it's amazing. So before I dare put a plane on here, I have to recess the screws a little bit further, being very careful not to go far enough to send them through the plywood. 
and then find a very rudimentary way to scribe a line of about a quarter inch over the length of this. Now I don't necessarily have to cut right to the line, um, as long as I have it use it as a guide. Right then let's see if this seems to be square at all yes excellent excellent even maybe slightly tipped downhill here um, this thwart has been a chronic problem with water down in here and I should have paid closer attention to why it was basically built on a crooked not crooked but um, camera deck anyway solving two problems at once okay so the propane locker is now in position it is time to drill the hole in the deck and uh, I'm not stressed about this no I'm not at all so if you've been following along I'm basically using the piece of starboard as a template because I've only drilled the quarter inch hole which is the locator hole and I'm gonna use that to drill through into the deck straight down and then from there we'll see what we'll do So there's my hole in the deck. Yep, found air, which is really nice. So now I'm gonna stick my screwdriver down through so it's really easy to see. And I'm gonna open this locker back here, uh, this hatch, and uh, see if I can reach through. It's going to be a long reach. It's possible I may need to make an access hole in this bulkhead from under the bed, but you can imagine I'd rather not do that. Anyway, let's have a look. This is a beast of a hatch, but it's absolutely beautifully made, especially now that I know it's also cambered. Unfortunately, the uh, lift handle on the port side broke a few years ago, and I haven't been able to find one that's the same, so it's kind of hacked, and I have to take it out right now. Oh, it's also incredibly heavy. Because it's really... Whoop. Got it. Big! Oi, oi, oi. All right then, folks. Well, this screwdriver here is in the hole that I drilled down into the build through the sole. Now, I had hoped to be able to reach it from this locker. And frankly, I've had this up and I can reach around the fuel tank, which comes to about here, and just touch the end of the screwdriver. But it would be very, very difficult to put the fittings on, on the bottom. Uh, because as many have mentioned, I can't possibly put all the fittings on the bottom of the locker and then drop it down because it's under the deck here. Um, now I had a backup, and that's that I can reach through from under the bed through this bulkhead, um, which has a semi-removable panel. Let's go have a look at it. Okay, folks, well, you're joining me under the bed in one of the more delightful locations of any wooden boat um, deep in the mess. So what we can see here, uh, first thing you're going to notice is the bottom of the bed, which I built uh, some time ago. And it was meant to be temporary, but it's holding in there. Uh, evidence of some water leakage we've had. Um, we can see the bulkhead that goes into the um, underneath the cockpit sole. We can see the framing, uh, which is in remarkably nice shape. Uh, the planking. Uh, the two holes that the propane lines went out, which were old holes that happened to be there from something else. I'm not sure what they were. Uh, and three generations. One, two, three generations of old uh, fuel returning lines, including a compression fitting. So, so, so nice. Uh, anyway, so this is all going as part of a upcoming... Um, redo of the fuel lines but this panel here if you see this seam of the bulkhead plywood should be removable which would mean it is a very easy reach through to um, where the propane locker is uh, fitting is coming through unfortunately it's behind a relatively big deck beam but I think I'll cope okay so let's see if I can get this well first I got to take these fuel lines off all right well a little wiggling 
has told me that there are no fasteners around the bottom against the frame, but there are a row of quite robust nails here at the top uh, into a deck beam that I can just see the bottom of in there. So that's gonna require a cat's paw. And, uh, cause I don't wanna destroy this piece of wood too much as I hope to put it back. in conditions like this. There we go. There we go. Ow. Okay. Well, let's get that out. And we can peer back into the bilges and uh, see some uh, sisters that someone has put on at some point. I knew they were there. They didn't do a very bad job, actually. Okay. Well, just behind that beam is where the um, line is going to come down. All right. Okay, and so now that I know I can get at it, it's time to commit to drilling the hole. Now, because I moved the hole locker forward about three quarters of an inch, the hole is now precariously close to a beam. In fact, I'm just going to touch the edge of that deck beam, but I really, that's going to be okay. All right. Okay, so it's time for the first dry fit with the uh, through hull on, and it indeed fits just Fine. Okay, folks, it's finally time to try and cut the chamfered hole in the piece of starboard. Uh, for those of you who haven't been following along, uh, this is a piece of starboard, which is a high-tech plastic, which will sit in the bottom of the propane locker to add some um, non-skid uh, mar resistance to the bottom. However, the through hull that's going to go in the bottom has a chamfer on it. So simply drilling a hole is not going to make that flush with the bottom of the locker. So I need to cut a hole that has a chamfer on it. Well, a great big massive um, counterbore would do the trick, but uh, you guys are going to enjoy the Travels of Geordie patented flying chisel. Yes, indeed. I have um, hose clamped a chisel to a quarter inch drill, actually 5 16 so it'll slightly enlarge that hole, at what I have determined to be the exact location to cut this chamfer. We'll all find out together how well this works. Obviously, keeping it perfectly aligned is key, but as it starts to cut, I should get a pretty good idea of how to adjust. Added a piece of plywood on the bottom, so when I cut through the plastic, the drill still has something to ride on. Oh my gosh, let's see how this goes. Because of the way it bounces, I need to put something more secure underneath much more robust. See how uniform I'm cutting. Feels pretty good. There we go. And I'm through. A little bit of flashing there. Okay, that is pretty darn close. And that fits super, 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 super nice. I love it. Clean up that flashing just a little bit and I am 99% there. Cool. Another really good use for my friend, the carbide scraper. Absolutely brilliant. Love it. Oh yes, and these will be available in my Etsy store starting tomorrow. As this is a chronic um, dampness and leak issue, uh, I'm gonna try and improve it a bit by cleaning this all out with a carbide scraper so I can get to good wood and then uh, get it good and dry and um, put some sealant in all through here. And of course, plug these two massive old holes that I don't need. Uh, of course, the best way to keep water out of a place like this is to keep it from getting down to here. And I'll make an effort on that too, and I'll show you what we're going to do about that. But in the meantime, let's just get this as tidy as possible. Of course, everyone loathes to sand a teak deck, but because this had a locker here for so long there's an obvious actually ridge of wood here where this has been sanded or at least worn down and it's very very dirty and stained and because I'm gonna to have to raise this 
bench thwart locker thing, uh, the mahogany part that surrounds the propane locker. Um, the extension, the plinth I'm going to put on it is going to be an inch and a half further in. So I'll be I'll be seeing this dirty line. So I do have to tidy it up at least a little. It won't be long before the sun makes it all look exactly the same again. Yeah. All right then, well it's time, now that I've cut the happy chamfer hole on here, um, to actually finally install this in the locker and bed it in with some uh, 291. Yes, you can get 291 in white. How about that? Now this has a protective film on it. I think it has a protective film on it. I thought it had a protective Yes, it does. There we go. Uh, that. Oh, that's probably so much fun, isn't it? Okay, so what I thought I'd do um, is lay a bead of 291 all around the edge to have it sort of as a bedding. And then another one on top to act as a fill it. Now I'm not going to put any around the hole and I'll explain why in a second. So this just drops in. Sits into that bedding. Now I don't expect even good old 291 to stick particularly well um, to um, starboard but by the time I put a fillet in, it'll stick really well to the paint on the side of the locker and it'll create a fairly good lock to lock that in. I'm not too worried about it. Okay, and we'll use my classic rubber glove tooling technique. Oh, love that. Nothing to wipe off. Beautiful. Look at that. Excellent. Okay, so that's that done. Okay, for the butyl tape that I'm going to put down in there, I want to be able to cut a strip of it. And because um, this particular butyl tape, as I think I've mentioned, has a plastic strip down the middle, I have to be able to slice off the outer edge of it in a long strip. And this is not a piece of cake, I'll tell you, but it's the only way to do what I need to do. There we go. Now, got to set this in all the way around there. And again, because butyl tape is so good at this sort of thing, it just rolls in so nice. It's funny, we have no more seaplanes, but the Coast Guard still loves to fly their helicopters around. Probably for something very important. No, no, no doubt about it. Okay. So that's, if you can see down in there, and I hope you can, a nice bed here. How about I actually give you a proper view, seeing as you're with a very wide angle lens there. So by the time, now that I'm gonna be able to drop this flange into there, not flange, but through hull, of course it's sitting on the cockpit sole now, so I gotta pick it up and tighten it up. Tell me, are these things universally known as crescent wrenches? I mean, this is not a crescent brand crescent wrench. Um, my father called it a crescent wrench. His father was English. I have a feeling it's an English company, but someone will educate me on that. I think a lot of people just call this an adjustable wrench. But crescent must have been a brand, much like ice grip. But uh, anyone who knows anything about that, I'd be glad to know. Now, because this is butyl tape on the other side, I can tighten this a bit now, let it relax a little bit, and then in half an hour or so, give it a little tighten. So this is as close to sinning as I usually get. I'm going to use the balance of this 291 to caulk this, to seal this joint. Um, not that it's a bad joint, it's actually in pretty good shape, but there's some spots here where there's some rot and stuff. And I'm going to pump it into these holes. Um, there's going to be need to be some serious work here someday. I'm just trying to stave it off a bit. So drastically increasing the ventilation here, keeping water from actually getting into the end grain too much. I'm not going to justify it any further. I'm just going to do it. And lastly, fill the holes. You can see what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to basically putty this whole area with this. Now, many of you will quickly remind me that this will relatively soon just become an independent 
big pile of rubber that's not actually bonded to anything. But I've done hideous things like this in the past and been surprised at how long that actually stays useful. Yeah, anyway, there's the sin for today. Well, it doesn't look like we're gonna get this finished this week and I apologize, it just turned into such a big project and there was so much footage. I could have condensed it into one week's episode, but what I thought I'd do is put this episode up and another bonus episode up tomorrow, Easter Sunday, that will definitely finish it off. So I hope everyone's okay with that. Uh, onto the beer of the week. Okay, we're going to Mount Arrowsmith here on the island for their Jagged Face IPA. Uh, pretty excited about this because I've never had it. Let's see what this is like. And let's see if I can pour it without a complete disaster. Oh, it's looking pretty foamy. As I'm in social isolation, I tell you, I'm pretty sorry to be missing out on the path that you can see behind me, which is one of the greatest things about living here. It, uh, traverses the shore. I'm sure we've, I've told you many times all the way down past my favorite local pub, which of course is closed, downtown. Social distancing is not really possible on this path. You'll see a lot of people on it and I'd love to be there, but trying not to do it, it's killing me, but life isn't too bad. So cheers. Let's see what we think of this. Wow. That is okay. Double wow. That's a caramelly, nutty, IPA. Never seen anything like that before. Jagged Face IPA from Mount Arrowsmith. Wow, I like that. Mm. Okay, that's just fantastic. And I'll use it to cheers a heck of a lot of people because I gotta tell you, I've had an unbelievable week of patronage and I'm so, so grateful to you all. Um, I'm, I, I can't possibly memorize this many names. In fact, I had to Google some of them. So thank you so much for new Patreons. Elias, Sven Boini, Brett Glover, Clifford Gauck, Jack Henderson, Katrine Bohr, Ewan Burnett, Johannes uh, Hellings, Dan Olsen, Bjorn Torfesen, Sam Dutch, Bob Stenke, and Patrick Cahill. Thank you all so very much. I'm just amazed. And from PayPal, Gary Deschamps always comes through. Thank you again, Gary. Jamie Clark and Michael Blackburn and Stephen Gifford. Um, three more patrons because the list was on two sides of the page. Stevie Pinier, uh, Les Pomeroy, and Michael Skelton. And off the gift list, gift list uh, Amazon gift list, Robert Coates um, sent me a spool of marine wire. So grateful to you, Robert. My goodness, I am overwhelmed and touched, uh, especially in these trying times that you've all been so generous and it makes a huge difference for me. So thank you all so very, very much. Mm. Okay then, so we need a word of the week and I think there is nothing other than generous. I'm astounded by all of your generosity. So this week's word of the week will be generous. And uh, if you use the word generous in a comment down below, I will pick it random from the first 24 hours worth of comments. And if I pick you, you'll get a Travels with Jordy t-shirt. See you tomorrow.